So when we're programming with G-Code, a lot of the FANUC controls these days come with macro B programming enabled, and that enables us to use variables in our programming. So what exactly is a variable? In this video, we're gonna take a look. So my name's Mark, and I'm here today as G-Code Tutor with Practical Machinist. So what is a variable? Well, in a nutshell, it's a symbol for a number we don't know yet. So if we look at any equation, say for example, Pythagoras' theorem, where we state a squared plus b squared equals c squared, a, b, and c are all variables. It all represents a number that we don't know what it is yet, but we do know the maths or the calculation that's gonna make the equation work when we do know those numbers. So variables are the backbone behind all programming languages. So it's only fair that G-code gets variables. So in the world of G-code, variables are expressed in the program by a hash symbol followed by a number. Now I'm using the phrase hash symbol. It's often called a pound symbol, but where I'm from England, the pound symbol is different for me. And in the music world, it would be known as a sharp. But with social media these days, we generally know the symbol as a hash symbol. So that's what I'm gonna call this symbol. So when we define variables in G-code, it looks like this, like hash 100, hash 500, etc. So this is what our variables look like. Whereas in maths, it may be represented by a letter. In G-code, it's represented by a number that follows a hash symbol. So we can give variables a number or a value. So if we state hash 100 equals one, from there onwards, our variable 100 would be equal to the value of one. And we can do maths with these variables. So we can say that hash 110 plus one is equal to variable 100. So we can manipulate our values and do maths with these variables quite easily within G code. And we might use something like this, for example, to count cycles. So we could say hash 100 equals hash 110 plus one. And we could add that to the bottom of each block of program. So it adds one to the variable 100 every time it gets to that point of the program. So that's just one very basic example of a use we may have for this. So by giving a variable a value, we define it. We tell the variable what it is. And there's a few ways we can go about doing that. So we can add manually into the register of the machine controls to say what a variable is. We have a section on the machine controls, which gives us hash 100, hash 101, etc. all the variables listed, and we can assign a value to them in a box next to that variable. But we can also change the value of variables with inside our programs as well. And this is where it becomes very powerful as we can do maths and put the answer inside a variable and then use that variable for part of our program. But as with all programming languages, there is limitations to our variables and G-code has its own set of rules that limit us with them. One of them is that variables can only contain numbers. Now this was a huge disappointment to me when I first discovered variables in G-code. So I wanted to write a chatbot inside a CNC machine where the machine would engrave an answer to a question. We could do that with variables, but unfortunately not with G-code. The second rule is it cannot be Boolean. Now this means we can't set the variable to on or off, but we can work around this limitation because we could say a variable equals one, for example, and in the program, we could say, if variable equals one, then do this. If it does not, then do something else. And we can get our Boolean by manipulating the variables like that. But that is a massive subject for another day. So although the variables are not Boolean, we can manipulate them to be with our programs. So the other main rule is that we cannot have no more than eight digits inside our variable. And this doesn't matter where the decimal point is. So we could have, for example, one, two, three, four, decimal point, five, six, seven, eight, or we could have zero, one, two, three, four, decimal point, five, six, seven. So in total, we can't have more than eight digits, but the decimal points can lie anywhere within those eight digits. 
and a zero at the beginning of this number is also counted as a digit. Okay, so that's what a variable is and what it looks like within G-code. So what would we use this for? Well, we really have unlimited uses. It goes as far as our imagination will take it. But at the very basic level, we could define our variable here, hash 101, as 5, and another variable, hash 102, as 10. And then we could do maths with those variables. So we could say hash 101 plus hash 102 equals hash 103. So therefore, hash 103 would equal 15. And we could use this within our programs to do many, many things, including making our own cycles. So if we want a custom cycle made up, say, for example, a probing cycle, this is how we would do it. And we can also save the data from the position of the probe back into a variable to be manipulated at a different time. So this is how probing cycles are made, and that's just one use of variables. Over the coming months, I'm going to discuss more about variables during these videos, and we're gonna look into their many uses and also how we manipulate them to be able to use them in our day-to-day -day programming. Because with variables, this really is a game changer with G-code programming. We can really do anything we like with this programming language. So it becomes a very, very powerful language and we can do a lot with our machines. And a basic knowledge of variables is really important for a CNC machinist. But if you're eager to learn about programming with variables now, I do have a course over on my website at gcodetutor.com that covers this. Because a lot of the time the CAD CAM software can't handle this and this would need uh, human input to be able to do these calculations and to add this to our programs.